challenges some of our most fundamental beliefs. Are we not alone in the universe? Have we indeed been visited by beings from other worlds? Does it make any sense to you what it could possibly be? No, we're in as much as dark as you are. In 1965, radar detected something in the skies over Edwards Air Force Base in California. Recently, some of the recordings of the conversations during the incident have been declassified. Hello, uh, this is Captain Clark, Alpha Lima. Okay, uh, Captain Clark, uh, Lieutenant Reed. Yeah. Uh, we have some confirmed reports of uh, some unidentified flying objects in your area. Okay. Approximately six or more uh, from Edwards. Uh, they're just south of Victorville. They're moving slowly and climbing slowly. The red, white, and green flashing lights. Uh-huh. And uh, they have been confirmed on radar. Uh, they can't establish what these things are. These excerpts from the audio documentary Edwards Air Force Base Encounter, compiled by producer Sam Sherman, are proof to many that UFOs do exist. Three more of them. Well south and dim. Okay. Well, and I still see a red light occasionally out of one of them. Where are they from that big bright one? Beneath them and just a little bit south. And there's three of them almost in a straight line. Uh-huh. I don't like to be the only one seeing these type things. <laughs> uh, I still have a contact out there. Oh, you do? Visual? Yes. Is it one of these objects? Does it look the same as the rest of them? No, this one uh, just appears to be a flash, not, uh, not any red or green spot. Oh, I see. Could be something else. All right, I have Alpha Lima in sight now. Yeah, he says he's got a contact, 12 o'clock 16. That's it. Some believe that the earliest reports of UFO sightings date back hundreds, if not thousands, of years. Certainly, in this century, the notion of distant space travel and contact with exotic beings from other worlds has been a captivating and entertaining subject in popular culture. The pervasive paranoia of the 50s was reflected in frightening depictions of invasions from outer space. Flying saucers have invaded our planet. Washington, London, Paris, Moscow are key targets. The whole world is under attack. Motion pictures and TV shows portrayed flying saucers and their pilots as sinister enemies to mankind. While images such as these appear laughable now, at the time, they represented disturbing possibilities of disaster resulting from alien contact. With some notable exceptions, contemporary attitudes thankfully tend to be more hopeful. Recently, part of Nevada Highway 375 was renamed the Extraterrestrial Highway, welcoming any and all alien visitors. Most people, when they look to the sky, see friend or foe. Not me. I see intergalactic tourists. <laughs> Many point to a variety of mysterious phenomena as evidence of the presence of extraterrestrials. Crop circles in the UK are often claimed to have been caused by alien beings. Likewise, they have been blamed for many unexplained instances of animal mutilation across the United States. And while there has been little physical evidence to prove the claims, thousands of individuals have reported being abducted by aliens and subjected to frightening examinations on board extraterrestrial craft. UFO debunker Philip Kloss feels that none of these claims offer substantial proof of extraterrestrial visitation. In 30 years, more than nearly 31 years of investigating mysterious UFO cases, I have yet to find one, not a single one, that cannot be explained in down-to-earth or prosaic terms. Scientist John Pike tends to agree. I think it's clear that tens of thousands of people every year see objects flying in the sky that they can't explain. Uh, I think that it's equally clear that upon investigation, most of those sightings have relatively prosaic explanations, but a small percentage of them remain very difficult to explain. 
When you do the math, it's fairly clear that life, civilized life, should be very abundant in the galaxy. Space flight isn't that difficult, so the question is, why aren't those advanced civilizations already here? Because we certainly don't seem to see them here. Could it be that in this amazing universe, 100 billion galaxies, each with hundreds of billions of stars, this is the only star that has an inhabited planet? I mean, it seems like the height of human arrogance. But that's not proof. The only way you really find out is by looking. For over 30 years, scientists involved with SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, have been scanning the heavens for signals from other worlds. Everything we've learned in our modern studies of astronomy, of biology, of evolution of life, have showed that the steps which led to our being here, including our high technology using civilization, are completely normal steps in the evolution of a star and its planets. And therefore, the steps which led to our existence should have occurred in many, many places. And therefore, there should be many technology-using civilizations in space. Regrettably, the U.S. Congress canceled funding for SETI in 1993, but the search still goes on. Lee Chagall believes that a different NASA project may be the means of contact. We sent Voyager out in space. And Carl Sagan and other scientists, Nobel laureates, fought vehemently to put that gold plate, that record album, on the side of that probe with the images and sounds of what the essence of human culture is. Why did they do that? Because they hoped that someday some extraterrestrial race would find that probe, retrieve that record from the side of it, see the diagram, learn how to play it, and understand who and what we are and see the map of its trajectory and follow it back to this world. And they thought, well, maybe it'll be 10,000, 30,000, maybe a million years from now. But someday they would discover that. Why did they do that? Because they believed in the possibility that extraterrestrial life might be out there. Now think about that in reverse. What if they did it to us? Would we say, oh, it's ludicrous, it could never happen? How could we make a statement like that when we ourselves did the very same thing? Suppose they're sending probes out into space and one of them may have inadvertently come here. And maybe one of those probes had within it the life forms of that other world. Those who study the phenomenon of UFOs, ufologists, are convinced that the government knows a lot more about alien life than they even come close to admitting. For years, both civilian and military pilots have reported observing mysterious objects while in flight. Astronauts Gordon Cooper and Frank Borman have publicly announced their encounters, and yet, no official announcement. And, and it's interesting because the denial has actually gone from uh, the original Condon report in the 1950s that said UFOs aren't dangerous, but people who see them are. So it's gone from everybody that sees them as crazy to, okay, we'll investigate the phenomenon to now there's nothing to it, to now it being, well, we can't confirm or deny. So in other words, the military is now saying, we can't say that there isn't something, but we can't say there is something either. So you notice that even the level of deniability has actually swung in an arc that's more towards favoring the truth. I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. The Air Force interest in this problem has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. In pursuit of this obligation since 1947, we have received and analyzed between one and 2,000 reports that have come to us from all kinds of sources. Of this great mass of reports, we have been able adequately to explain the great bulk of them. However, there have been a certain percentage of this volume of reports that have been made by credible observers of relatively incredible things. It is this group of observations that we now are attempting to resolve. Responding to ever-increasing awareness to the situation, the Air Force launched what they called Project Blue Book, implemented, they said, to investigate the UFO phenomenon. Project Blue Book was the third name for the Air Force's publicly known UFO investigation. Uh, by previous names, it goes back to January 1948, 
and continued until December 1969, almost 22 years. Uh, it was headquartered at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. It accepted UFO reports from government people, from the general public. It collected over 12,000 reports and it was charged obviously with explaining every single report it got. The techniques it used were sometimes so unscientific as to make you wonder what was going on. But when it closed down and the files were first sent to the Air Force archives and later to the National Archives here in Washington, there was still almost 600 reports admittedly unexplained. There were two or three times that many reports claimed to have been explained but weren't. But these are the ones the Air Force said they felt they had enough information but couldn't come up with an answer. It was as if unexplained was an explanation. You explain some as balloons, some as airplanes, and some as unexplained. And that was the end of it. This was definitely not a scientific study. It was a public relations effort. Only a fool would say that there is no possibility of life elsewhere but on Earth. Yes, there must be life out there, but I must say that we, we on Earth have not seen it yet. None of the arguments made by a very small group of debunkers, noisy negativists as I call them, people like my college classmate Carl Sagan, against the first two conclusions, stand up under careful scrutiny. The arguments sound great until you look at the evidence and they collapse of their own weight. The evidence is overwhelming that planet Earth is being visited by intelligently controlled extraterrestrial spacecraft. In other words, some UFOs, underline the sum 20 times, are alien spacecraft. Most are not, I don't care about those. Coming up next. They tried to kill every last word of it. They didn't want anyone to know anything about this, not even a thought. When we continue with Roswell, cover-ups and close encounters, 